So this is just a quick video to go over the chapter seven and chapter eight quizzes that I gave you in class. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or stop by before class starts. Hopefully this helps. Let's get to the video. Um, I'm just gonna go over some of these problems, read them through and then uh, make a few quick comments. Again, uh, hopefully you can either go through these or you try these problems on your own. So starting with chapter seven, I know these are all one chapter off, so I will change that accordingly. So after conducting a survey, a pet store see what impact having a pet had on the condition of the yard. So having a pet, that's categorical. And the condition of your yard, so that would be also categorical. Is it good? Is it fair? A news reporter stated, there appears to be a strong correlation between owning a pet and the condition of the yard. So even though that their language is good in terms of talking about a model, um, the variables, both owning a pet and your condition of a yard, are categorical variables. So we do not use correlation um, to be calculated with ca categorical variables. We don't use uh, no to Pearson's constant. Um, if you remember, this would be, uh, would use Spearman's constant. If you don't, that's fine. Just know that uh, with our categorical variables, we do not use correlation. Okay, problem two. On the axis sketch scatter plot described a strong positive association. So we want our dots closely grouped together uh, in a linear fashion and in a positive direction. So right and up. A weak negative association. So hopefully you drew something different, but we want more scatter in our pot and our dots in our scatter plot. And we want them to be going in a downward direction. Okay. A study by a prominent psychologist found a moderately strong positive association between the number of hours of sleep a person gets and the person's ability to memorize information. Explain in context of this problem what a positive association means. So in this context, a positive association means, in general, people who had more sleep were able to memorize more information. The increase in one also causes an increase in the other. Now, we, all, we don't say it actually causes, but in general, people who had more sleep were able to memorize more information. Uh, again, these are weasel words. Um, we can't be super precise because models are always wrong. Okay, moving on. Hoping to improve academics performance, the psychologist recommended the school board allow students to take a nap prior to any assessment. Discuss this reasoning. Okay, so if they see that there's an association, a strong positive association, it's easy to make a recommendation or a prescription that, oh, if we just want them to do better, we give them more sleep. But I want you to think uh, correlation does not equal causation. Just because someone gets more sleep does not mean that they will do better or be able to memorize more. Uh, this is the whole idea. So is attributing association to cause and effect. We do not do that. There's an implication that more sleep will cause better memorization, therefore causing an increase in assessment scores. Perhaps people had more, memorized more, were able to sleep more restfully, or perhaps brain different differences in the brain chemistry allowed people to memorize more and to sleep more easily. There's so many different factors going on. Our lurking variables are present that um, you just don't want to then go, oh, strong association, therefore cause and effect. Okay, moving on. Common objective for many school administrators is to increase the number of students taking SAT and ACT tests for their school. The data from each state from 2003 is reflected in the scatter plot at the right. So we are given this scatter plot. We see SAT scores by state. On the bottom, we have SAT participation. So these are obviously the rate, and then we have our mean SAT scores. So if we took a decently sized 
line to see what our line of best fit could be, we see that there is some scatter to the data, but in general, there is a moderate negative linear association between the percent of students taking the SAT and the total SAT score. So it appears that states with larger percentages of students taking the SAT test will have a lower average test score. So the, as we see, as we tail off to the bottom, the higher the participation, the lower the mean score. So if you tried to estimate what the R value would be and you said it was moderate or moderately strong, the actual R value for this is negative 0.76. Now, if you're on, anything between negative 0.6 and negative 0.9 are acceptable, as long as you see that it's moderate to moderately strong, moderate because there is some scatter, especially a little bit of curve at the bottom. And knowing what we know in chapter eight, we can do a little more investigation on that. So C, if the point in the top left corner, four comma 1215 were removed, would the correlation become stronger, weaker, or remain the same? So we have one of these outliers, it, it's or leverage points, as we called it, which is reducing the strength of our correlation. If I didn't have to factor that one point in at the top, then we'd have an even stronger relationship. So the correlation would become stronger because the remaining points show a pattern with slightly less scatter. So if you're able to interpret what that means, uh, removing it, we get slightly close together so that our correlation will be slightly stronger. And then D, if the point in the very middle, 3, 38, comma, 1049, so 38, 1049 were removed, would correlation become weaker, stronger, or remain the same? Now, this point doesn't have a whole lot of leverage on our, here, I'll just highlight that in. This middle point that I highlighted in purple is not really messing too much with our scatter. We have points above, points below. In general, it's going to fit close to our line of best fit that we sketched in. So it would not uh, change the correlation. Uh, the correlation would remain about the same. The point does not contribute too much of the scatter. You see it's kind of following along many of the other points that fall in that line. It doesn't have a whole lot of scatter. The residual is very low. So our point would not have too much influence. Hopefully that helps with chapter seven's review. Now we will move on to chapter eight. Moving on to chapter eight. Let's change that one more time. So chapter eight, uh, an effort to decide if there's an association between the year of a postal increase and a new postal rate for first class mail, the data were gathered from the United States Postal Service in 1981. United States Postal Service changed their rates on March 22nd, and November 1st. This information is shown in the table below. So the first thing you have to do, make a scatter plot, describe the, the association between the year and the first class postal rate. So shape, outliers, direction, spread, other key things to highlight in here. We have our postal rate, let's just change that size, and we have our year. So a year is our explanatory. And our postal rate is our response variable or our predicted value. So when we're making our model, it's important that we have uh, postal rate hat equals B sub zero plus B one times our year. That's what our model is going to be. So I want to add, uh, Skip ahead to go to Desmos. Here is our data graphed nicely in Desmos. You can see our scatter plot has a strong positive linear association between year and the first class postal rate as postal rates have increased over time. That's what we see. So if I click on the slope intercept formula, we can see in the bottom right hand corner, sorry, bottom left hand corner, that we have our r squared, so our variability is 0.9895, and our correlation coefficient is 0.9947.
which is almost perfect. Uh, we also see that our slope is uh, 0.01015 and our y-intercept is negative 19.92. Additionally, if we turn on our residuals graph, we can see that our residuals don't show any pattern. Uh, we have many very small residuals as we go over time. So here's our scatter plot. It's important that we label those. Label the x and y axes and then answer the question. Describe the association. So there is a strong positive linear association between the year and the first class postal rate. Postal rates have increased over time, which is what we see. Next up, create a model and predict to predict postal rates from the year. So as the book often does, this is way more information than we need, just as uh, highlights what I just showed you in Desmos. We have our constant, which is our y-intercept. We have our year, which is our explanatory variable. So that's our slope. And we should also have our r squared, which is 99%. Um, we're going to leave the R squared adjusted alone for right now. And when we write our slope, our predicted value is the postal rate. So we can have rate hat equals negative 19.93 plus 0 0.01015 times the year. Again, there's no hat. On the explanatory variable, no hat. And that's because we're using that actual value. Okay, moving on. Do you think the linear model is appropriate here? So again, if we want to talk about the appropriateness of our linear model, we look at our residual plots. So here is a different residual plot. The y-axis is the residuals, and these are actually showing our rates that we got. So we see that there's no pattern in the scatter for our residual plot. So then, yes, a linear model is appropriate for this problem. A review of the residual plot shows no obvious patterns. That is all you need to say. So again, once we see that linear regression models are fine, we want to interpret the slope. We want to interpret the y-intercept. And we also want to interpret the r-squared. Just always think r correlation coefficient, r squared coefficient of dependence. So that's our variability. How much one, var one how much variability is due to the other? So let's just go down these down the line. Interpret the slope of the model in our context. So we saw that the slope of the model was 0 0.01015. This means the model predicts, that's our weasel word, that for every additional year, the first class postal rate will increase by about one cent on average. That's what 0 0.01015 means. If we interpret the intercept of our model, um, the intercept of the model is negative 19.93. The model predicts that at year zero, so uh, the year of our Lord zero, when Jesus was born, the first class postal rate was negative 19.93 dollars. Of course, you go, how, how does one receive $20 back by taking in stamps? This number is not realistic. We still report it, and then we go forth. So what is the correlation between the postal rate? As you saw before, we had 99. If r squared equals 99%, so 0.99, if you take the square root of that, it's going to be plus or minus 0 0.9950. As we saw, our scatter plot was linear. That's why we drop the negative, sorry, drop the negative sign and just keep r, our Pearson's correlation coefficient, to be positive. So since the scatter plot shows a positive linear relationship, the positive value must be used. And then here's our last bit. We interpreted the slope. We interpret the intercept. Explain the meaning of r squared in this context. So if r squared is 99 or 0.99 or 99 percent, 99 percent of the variation in first class postal rates can be accounted for by the variation in year. Remember, this is your response or your predicted variable, and this year is your explanatory variable. 
just plug into that formula that I gave you, and you'll be good. So would it be would it be better for customers to have for a year to have a negative residual on a postal or, or a positive residual for this model? So in this model, if you have a negative residual, that means what you paid was lower than the predicted value. If you want to pay less than what the model predicts, that's a good thing for you. It's a bad thing for the US government. So it would be better for customers to have a negative residual from this model. Negative residual would indicate that the actual first class postal rate is lower than the model would model predicted it would be. So when you're given a scatter plot, we should be able to do all of the analysis, including creating a scatter plot, find the slope, find the y-intercept, find the r squared, find the r, and interpret each one of those in context. Hopefully, these reviews have helped you prepare. You guys are going to do great. So there you have it. Hopefully this review was helpful for you. Again, if you have any other questions, feel free to come in before or after class uh, to get clarification. I just want to wish you guys luck. Get some sleep tonight. Uh, as you saw, correlation does not equal causation, but it helps. So good luck, and I'll see you tomorrow.